You're listening to Battling Opioids, the podcast. Battling Opioids, the podcast, now on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcast, TuneIn, Amazon, YouTube, and now Radio.com. We had the opportunity to speak by phone with John Auerbach, the CEO of Trust for America's Health, about a report the organization released last week, part of their series called Pain in the Nation. Can you tell us about your organization? Sure. Uh, Trust for America's Health is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. We don't take any government money or corporate money. We're funded entirely by philanthropies to promote public health and prevention policy. Uh, we're based in Washington. We produce research reports. We focus on looking deeply into policy and ways to improve it. And then we do uh, education and advocacy with policymakers at the national level and in states. Trust for America's Health just released a report. Can you describe the report, kind of summarize it uh, in a few sentences? I know it's, it's not easy because it, there's quite a lot of detail in here. Uh, the Trust for America's Health has done a series of reports that have focused on the crisis that's created by the dramatic increase in deaths from drug, alcohol, and uh, suicides. That series is called Pain in the Nation. In addition to looking at the, the data, we also try to understand what is causing the problem and what are the policies that can help to reduce the risk. The report that we've released is focused on millennials, because as we've looked more closely at the data, what we've seen is the millennial population is disproportionately affected by substance use and uh, mental health. And, and that therefore, in addition to understanding the data, we need to make sure that the policies that are developed are customized to address, in this instance, the particular circumstances that are faced by millennials. We looked at the deaths over the last decade, and what we found when looking at millennials were that 25% of the deaths from the combined uh, causes that we were referring to uh, were millennials, so a higher percentage of millennials than they represent within the general public. And we saw staggering increases in terms of these deaths. In the last 10 years, drug deaths uh, were up 108% for millennials. Alcohol deaths were up 69%. Suicides were up 35%. It's very unusual to see that kind of an increase over a relatively short period of time for a young population, a population that we are accustomed to thinking of as being in the prime of life and in the best health they will ever be in. I also appreciated the thought that went into looking for factors that might contribute to this large increase as well as dramatic difference between other age groups. Yes, we, we, we wanted to understand that, just what, what was behind this. And these diseases are often called diseases of despair. And so we tried to move upstream, if you will, to think about what contributed to despair and vulnerability among millennials, and we found a number of factors. Among the factors that increased vulnerability were the historic levels of education debt, the the challenges that millennials faced in launching their careers during the Great Recession and its aftermath, and the very high costs associated currently with housing and with child care. Millennials, for example, unlike previous generations, will just have a more difficult time buying a home or a condo because of these kinds of uh, economic pressures. Can you share any statistics pertaining to Pennsylvania specifically? I can. In Pennsylvania, if we look at the data from the most recent year for which data is available, that's 2017, there were a little more than 8,200 people who died from either drug or alcohol overdose or suicide. Of that 8,200, we estimate that approximately 2,000 or or 25 percent were millennials. We looked at how rapidly those numbers were increasing 
and we compared the numbers in Pennsylvania in 2017 to just one year earlier, just to 2016, and found the startling figure that there was an 11% increase in those deaths in, and here I'm referring to rates, 11% increase in the rate in just a single year. Again, very unusual to see an increase that enormous in a one-year period. Pennsylvania's rate of deaths from these causes was very much higher than the rest of the countries. The average for the United States, just for example, was about 46 per 100,000, 46 deaths per 100,000. In Pennsylvania, the rate was 64 per 100,000. So that's about a 50% higher rate of deaths from these causes than the rate of the United States overall. What suggestions do you have for us in Pennsylvania to address these shocking numbers? Well, we have a number of policy issues that we have identified that have strong evidence base. The first of those is the importance of screening and access to services. Substance abuse services, mental health services are critically important. And sadly, we are still in a a situation where uh, many people don't have health insurance. In, In fact, millennials are twice as likely to be uninsured as other adult age groups. So taking steps to guarantee that people have access to comprehensive health insurance with behavioral health coverage and that they are appropriately uh, referred to those services, that's number one. But we also try to look at how to reach millennials, and the way to reach millennials is to go where they are uh, to offer information screening and access. And so where are millennials? Well, among the places where it would be important to do outreach and to provide access to services would be places where people go for education and training. That can be colleges or technical schools. It can be places people go for reproductive services. That's, that's, those are heavily used by millennials. We know that millennials are disproportionately likely to be in the armed services or coming out of the armed services where we know that can be a challenge. And they're more likely to be engaged in either the court or the judicial system. And so having specialized approaches in that setting where there are, for example, all alternatives to sentencing is important. I would say that's number two. Find out where the millennials are. Take advantage also of social media and the ways to advertise and promote. Number three is millennials are of the age where people have children, and many millennials are having children or they're considering having children. And we know that we want to work both to reduce the risk of millennials, but also to help them in terms of parenting so that the next generation is at reduced risk. There's a good deal of data that if you're at risk, your children will be at risk unless interventions are consciously taken. And so there's a good deal of information now about reducing adverse childhood experiences and trauma. So helping millennials there and thinking about their children and how to work from from the earliest ages to reduce trauma Uh, in young children is part of helping to address the needs of millennials. And many schools now are developing what are sometimes referred to as trauma-informed schools. Those are schools where when there is a behavioral problem that's identified with a student, rather than thinking, let's get them out of here, what's wrong with that student, the approach becomes, uh, let's try to understand what has happened in that student's life that has caused their behavior, and let's try to address that. And the schools that are adopting those now evidence-based approaches are finding that within as little as a year, they see statistically significant reductions in suspensions. They see increases in improvements in academic performance. And they are, are able to help the families of these children as well as the students themselves to address some of the, the underlying issues. And, and, and those issues, by the way, are, are also part of the solution. That they, they sometimes deal with housing insecurity, food insecurity, the pressures from poverty or homelessness or, or other social and economic problems. And where can our listeners learn more? The full report with information about Pennsylvania as well as policies that work is at our website, and our website is www.tsah, 
trustforamericashealth.org. T-F-A-H are the letters for Trust for America's Health. And on our website, they'll be able to read about millennials and the diseases of despair, but also they'll see other reports that we've developed with state-specific information and helpful guidance in the policies that are effective in preventing deaths from these causes. Your report includes not only the real hard facts, but also these policy recommendations and the evidence-based studies that allow for hope and for action. And there's really reason for hope, as you say. The the evidence shows that with the right approaches, we can uh, save these lives and we can avoid much of the suffering. The evidence exists, and we've tried to summarize it in helpful ways. Recovery starts with a call. Call 1-800-662-HELP or visit battlingopioids.org. It doesn't take long to become addicted to opioids. 13 Pennsylvanians die from them every day. Geisinger is committed to ending opioid addiction with both prevention and treatment. In the last three years, we've reduced the amount of opioids we prescribe by 50%, and we've opened four medication-assisted treatment centers across the state to help patients recover from addiction. Learn more at geisinger.org slash have enough. <laughs> 